My name is Ellery Fromm, and I am a research scientist here in the Department of Anthropology in the Council of Archaeological Studies at Yale University. I'm also the director for the Yale Initiative for the Study of Ancient Pyrotechnology. That means one of the things I study and help our students study is how much of human technology has been based on controlling fire and heat, from simple campfires for warmth and cooking to developing new materials like ceramics and metals. I also study stone tools, especially those made out of obsidian, which has become popular recently due to its exposure in the TV show Game of Thrones. Oh, must be dragon glass. Dragon glass? The next is called obsidian. If you know Game of Thrones, you know obsidian, or dragon glass, is used to kill White Walkers and the Army of the Dead. If you don't know Game of Thrones, it's used to kill magic zombies. Even this month's Discover magazine has a story on obsidian, the real story of dragon glass. For thousands of years, Cultures around the world made stone tools out of obsidian using controlled strikes and breaks called napping. But now, at the start of the eighth season of Game of Thrones, we're seeing something different. Blacksmith characters working obsidian like it's iron. Melting it, casting it, forging it. Is this possible? Blacksmiths usually work between 1100 and 1200 degrees Celsius. So I decided to use a furnace to see if I could replicate what we saw on the show. In the newest episodes, we see people bringing wheelbarrows full of obsidian blocks into a blacksmithing area and appearing to melt them down. So first, how easy would it be to melt these blocks of obsidian? To test this, I decided to sacrifice, in the name of science, this obsidian biface that I made. Obsidian is a glass, so it's a poor thermal conductor. Even at 1100 degrees for an hour, it just wouldn't melt. And when I took it out of the furnace, it cracked into three pieces due to the thermal stresses. Next, can we get melted obsidian to pour out of a crucible like we see on the show? For this test, I used small chips of obsidian to get them to melt faster. But obsidian is sticky. It's what helps it turn into a glass when it's a lava. So it just sticks to the inside of the crucibles. It doesn't pour out like you see on the show. Next, we see obsidian being poured into molds and finished daggers popped out of them. To test this, I used graphite molds. Graphite is a refractory material, which means it keeps its shape under high temperatures. The shape of the mold was machined out using 3D scans of an actual arrowhead. The results of this test demonstrate the problem with trying to heat obsidian. Tiny amounts of water inside the obsidian expand and create bubbles. So instead of being left with razor-sharp obsidian, you have this layer of bubbly pumice on the outside. Finally, we see them hammering hot obsidian like they're forging iron. Is this possible? So, what would have been more realistic? in a show about fire-breathing dragons and magic zombies? I think the answer is Aztec weapons. The Aztecs put obsidian barbs on their spears, and they put obsidian blades along the edges of wooden clubs and swords. I think it's safe to say that these experiments have simply shattered how obsidian is worked in these episodes. <laughs>